Okay, welcome back to our lecture on the second part of um, the crisis of modernism, which is uh, one of our lectures uh, for Unit 11. And in this lecture, when we last left off, we kind of talked a little bit about um, American abstract expressionism and then where artists were going from that point. And, but I wanted to make sure everyone was clear that it wasn't like there was nothing going on in terms of painting and art in Europe, there was a whole lot going on, and um, I don't have time necessarily to show a lot of it, but I think uh, looking at Giacometti and Mirandi and Dubuffet, uh, Dubuffet is the one here, that you can kind of see that there was um, a lot going on and a very kind of different approach, and although quite varied between these three, they were still strikingly different from what was going on in America with abstract expressionism, philosophically taking a very different approach to Painting, although you could certainly see a connection in terms of how Giacometti painted negative space, a connection between the way he painted negative space and the way the abstract expressionists painted in general. Um, so once again though, with by the time we get to the end of um, abstract expressionism, we start to see uh, the sense of not sure where we are going. Um, we can see that in the, the career of Philip Guston. So here are some kind of mid-career paintings where he's struggling with trying to include shapes and groupings of shapes, um, but still trying to figure out how to do that without it necessarily being imagery. His work started more in this kind of approach where it was much more about just built up marks, you know, marks upon marks, these kind of fields of, of color. Um, but eventually, his work went to here. Um, and I think the, the reason for that is because at a certain point he found that this was a dead end, that no matter how much he avoided it, there was going to be, there was always going to be the suggestion of representation. And at a certain point he felt like I might as well just do it. Now, the thing to also understand is that um, these paintings didn't come out of nowhere. They came out of a body of of drawings that he was making for for nearly a decade and it took him that long to really figure out what he wanted to do with that kind of imagery in his paintings um, so another example of things maybe for artists coming to kind of a an end point would be like these very late Mark Rothko's where they're almost black on black and interestingly enough how these paintings were going on at a very similar time uh, in time period to um, uh, when Frank Stella was making these paintings. Although for Frank Stella, this was the beginning of where he was going to go and they were going to open up. Uh, whereas for Rothko, this was the end point. Or another painting, which we could see as kind of in some ways an end statement. Um, this Roy Lichtenstein is kind of like a, a final kind of nail in the coffin of abstract expressionism. And then that leads us to kind of like this literal kind of crisis moment where we have artists um, like Piero Manzoni, um, Joseph Boys, and uh, John Baldessari, and um, more just Boys, also a, um, we have a, a, a solid wit right there. And what all this artwork has in common is this sense of artists being a little bit unsure of where to go from here, and then some of those artists using that as um, as kind of like a spur or an excuse to go, you know, to the, the most extreme places. In this particular case, we see uh, um, Pierre Manzoni with um, this piece where he is selling little, um, little balloons of the breath of the artist, and over here he's selling canned versions of his own feces, um, both uh, labeled in Italian and in English. Um, and with um, with Joseph Boys, we have these kind of installations as well as performance pieces. Um, with John Baldessari, he famously, at a certain point in his career, realized that he was, you know, like all the paintings that he had tried to make were all terrible, and he basically performed a funeral for his paintings, he brought them all to a crematorium, and he burnt every single painting that he had. And then the very first piece he made after that was in his sketchbook, a piece where he wrote over and over again, 
I will not make any more boring art, which he then turned into a wall installation piece as well as other pieces like gallery spaces where he just covered the walls with that phrase over and over again. And these kind of performance pieces, um, shoot, well, I'm blanking on what's his name, the guy who got himself uh, uh, nailed to his Volkswagen be uh, Beetle. I'll remember it shortly, um, probably in the uh, next lecture. But Joseph Boys also did similar kind of performance pieces that were kind of pushing the boundaries of, of taste, of, of reasonableness. In this case, he locked himself in a, in a room for a week um, in a uh, Manhattan flat uh, with a wild coyote. Um, and even and Saul LeWitt, like his pieces, um, by trying to remove just the entire presence of his um, of any kind of physical object to make the artwork purely be just about the idea of the making of the work, um, that in of itself is a kind of like this kind of an end statement. And so this is kind of that point I'm, I'm talking about. It was it was deferred for a long time. In some ways you can see abstract expressions and really putting it off for a good deal, um, but there's this sense that, you know, both that modernism is ending, but that something new is starting, that postmodernism is beginning. And so we'll take that up in the next lecture. All right, I'll see you then.